السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and send complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household and all his companions, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness. Brothers and sisters, opportunities like these we very rarely get. We need to make the most of them by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the doors of mercy upon us and to grant us the hope that we need and to grant us the new beginning. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us every form of goodness. Habibi, it's too loud, yeah. This evening, inshallah, will be the last episode of the Pearls of Peace. We have 29 episodes, 27 parts, or should I say 29 parts, 27 episodes. We have part 3B and 17B, which are the two Jumu'ahs, which were also part and parcel of the Pearls of Peace. And inshallah, I'm saying this, which will be part of the production so that you know if you've missed out on anything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us ease. Allah says in Surah Al-Saf, something very important, a difficulty that a lot of us face, a weakness that many of us have. We say things and we do otherwise. We promise and we go against what we have promised. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us of how to achieve peace by fulfilling what you have promised, by making sure that whatever you have said with your tongue, you fulfill it or do not utter it. Don't promise something you are not going to deliver. A people, meaning people who deliver or who say that which is false, people who utter that which they are not going to fulfill, they would not be able to achieve peace in this world nor in the next. So Allah says in Surah Al-Saf, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَ تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ O you who believe, why do you utter that which you do not do? The verse has been revealed for specific reasons, but the lesson is very broad for every one of us. May He make us from those who can be protected from the false promise both ways. From making it and from falling prey to others who have made it to us. May Allah grant us peace and goodness. Then we have the issue of Jumu'ah. You know the Friday is the most important day of the Islamic calendar. I'm sure you would know that Allah requires the men folk to be in his house at a specific time. If you are not, you are sinful. And it is important for us to realize that the spirituality of an individual will drive the person earlier to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greater spirituality, the more importance you give that day of a Friday. So much so that Allah has said very clearly, there are some people who give preference to their business over the Friday sermon and the Jumu'ah. Allah says, قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهُوِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ رَازِقِينَ The last verse of that surah, Surah Al-Jumu'ah, Allah says, Tell them that which is with Allah is better than this enjoyment or amusement pastime and the business deals that they are trying to strike. For indeed Allah is the provider. He is the best of those who provide. So if we want provision, we need to know it should not happen in the transgression of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not asking us much. He gave us this life. And subhanallah, He asks us very little in return. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter makes mention of the hypocrites and some of their qualities. When a person has committed adultery or they have for example gone into the club or visited a pub or happened to engage in gambling or say for example is busy 24-7 with pornography. You know someone said that I'm speaking a lot about pornography this year because it is a problem. It is facing really or it is to be honest with you, affecting a large number. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So much so that I've had Muslims who've come to tell me that but where is it written that it's haram? That's how bad it is. So may Allah protect us. Really, we need to speak about it openly. It is totally forbidden, totally and completely. It contaminates the mind and spirituality almost irreversibly. May Allah protect us. It's only the mercy of Allah that can remove the effect 
the bad effect of pornography. Really, it reduces the respect of the opposite sex in an individual. And it makes the person feel that everyone in society is cheap. And it drops morality to its almost low. May Allah protect us. So brothers and sisters, if a person is involved in these items, then he hears the imam in the masjid talk about exactly the topic he was engaged in 15 minutes ago. He will think that, you know what, this imam has seen me somewhere. <laughs> if someone enters and they say, some of the people visit the pubs, they drink as much as they want Thursday night and Friday, they come into the masjid and, did he see me then? <laughs> May Allah protect us. Do you know what this is called? A guilty conscience. When a person has a guilty conscience, they feel that every statement being uttered is against them. So Allah describes this and He says it is the quality of the hypocrites. Verse number 4 of Surah Al-Munafiqun, named after the hypocrites. They think that every cry is against them. Everyone who says anything is against them. It's about them. This verse was revealed for a different reason. But as I say, the lesson is for everyone. Now, what is the solution? The solution is protect yourself from hypocrisy. If you were not in the club, you wouldn't have felt it that way. So you are guilty of something. Eradicate it. May Allah unite us and grant us goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. So Allah says thereafter very, very clearly, Ya amanu la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an O oh, you who believe, do not let your wealth or your offspring divert you or distract you from the remembrance of Allah. You have your children, enjoy them. You have your wealth, enjoy. But not over and above the duty that you have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we've always said, Allah comes first. That was verse number 9 of Surah Al-Munafiqun. But in the next surah, which is Surah Al-Taghabun, Allah makes mention of the same thing. He says, إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ fitna. Indeed, your wealth and your children are a test for you. We have given them to you as a test. So what you do with your wealth is a test. Allah is just watching. You either pass the test or you fail. How you handle your children, you either pass or you fail. Subhanallah. This is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May we be from amongst those who pass our tests, my beloved brothers and sisters. So Allah says, consider what you have as a test. You are answerable for the way you have handled it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in Surah Al-Tahreem, which is a few surahs down, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something very similar. Verse number 6. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O you who believe, save yourselves and your family members from the, funny, from the fire or from the punishment of the fire. Here Allah speaks of the fire. Save yourselves and your family members from the fire. This would mean that the circle commences with those closest to us. Start with yourself and your family members and then build further. Sometimes you may not succeed, but you can continue further and further. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who grants acceptance to those who try with sincerity. And if Allah has written that a family member is not going to accept what you have said for as long as you have tried your best to save them, your duty is fulfilled. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may He help us help one another. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thereafter there is a, an entire surah named after the divorce. At-talaq. Divorce is detested but it is permissible. Divorce is detested but it is permissible. Like we would say, it is better not to be single, it is better to be married. But it is better for a female, for example, and even a male, but a male normally would not have as big an excuse as a female, but it is better for her to remain alone than to be in a marriage of abuse. Do not misunderstand what I've said. We are encouraging everyone to get married by the will of Allah. But people who have been through tremendous abuse would definitely agree that it's better for me to be alone. Allahu Akbar. This is what is meant by it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about talaq in this whole surah. 
how to go about it brothers and sisters you need to know how to divorce before you marry because so many people do not know that they have already divorced their spouses and then they visit the ulama and a huge commotion takes place because they had already shot with their bullets their own spouses and they did not realize may Allah protect us may Allah grant us sanity may he make us from those who do not behave like animals if we want peace we need to realize try your best to make your marriage work go the extra mile to make your marriage work by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will find a lot of peace and comfort but if you are a person who's not prepared to try not prepared to give it a try in that particular case one wonders what would happen however if the divorce has gone through finally after we tried and tried again and we know that this is beyond a certain level and it went through Allah says don't worry he will provide for both remember protect yourself from mud slinging to speak bad about your spouse your ex-spouse is one of the greatest crimes you can commit lead a life come on get along with it stop being bogged down by your past the past do not talk about it leave it so what who was right and who was wrong does not mean anything when you are so happy today but the fact that you are continuously speaking bad about your ex would mean your life has not really progressed may Allah protect us you need to carry on in life and you need to make sure you are fulfilling their rights in the case where you have children and you need to make sure that you are fulfilling the minimum right of not speaking bad about them today people are prepared to call their exes the worst of swear words may Allah protect us what did you gain like I always say both parties were brilliant people but they could not get along Allahu Akbar they were good we always say man is good shaitan the devil is bad he makes us do things that really we should not be doing may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us so Allah says verse number two and three of surah al-talaq whoever develops taqwa Allah will grant them a way out and he will grant them sustenance from a source that they never expected this means if you develop your piety you develop the consciousness of Allah within you you obey Allah's instructions you develop what we know as taqwa automatically over time Allah will open your doors those doors you thought were closed for Allah no door is closed Allah says he will provide for you miraculously from a source that you never ever imagined you would be provided via may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and open our doors so remember if you would like to achieve this type of goodness and contentment you need to develop your consciousness of Allah make your best friend your maker who can be a person who is at a loss in terms of peace when his best friend is his own maker you can never lose if your best friend is your maker and everything you do is in his pleasure how can you lose may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all and grant us goodness then in surah Nuh there is another very valid pearl that we take what is it today people cry that you know what I can't make ends meet it's tough out there you know the profit margins are small my overheads are high and so on and so forth and people are crying and then they start engaging in clandestine activity in order to earn a dollar or two so they undercut or they lie or they do something that is really not acceptable Allah says that's not the way you will get power nor is it the way you will get sustenance nor is it the way you will be blessed with pious offspring no if you want goodness you need to know one thing Allah says and this is the statement that he had instructed the Prophet Noah may peace be upon him to say to his people and he said it Noah is saying oh Allah I told my people engage in istighfar which means repent to Allah ask his forgiveness he is most forgiving he will send the rain from the skies such rain that will be beneficial for you so when you ask Allah's forgiveness the rain comes through amazing instead of saying ya Allah grant me rain just say oh Allah I'm asking your forgiveness forgive me automatically the rain comes through look at the equation we think it works one way it actually works the other way and then Allah says now
As a result of that repentance, Allah will grant you lots of wealth. And He will grant you good offspring. And He will give you gardens. And He will give you rivers. Amazing. So, if we would like sustenance and we want pious offspring, what is the root? Better than asking Allah, Ya Allah, give me this. First, get on the same page. By saying, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, grant me, really, grant me a new beginning. Ya Allah, I repent to you. I've done bad. Admit your error. Admit your sin. Constantly engage in istighfar. Brothers and sisters, one of the pearls of peace is on a daily basis ask Allah's forgiveness even if it means more than a hundred times. It was done by the Prophet wasallam when he did not need it. It is definitely a means of inner and outer peace. Ask Allah's forgiveness. Do not be from amongst those who think, but I did not sin today. Why should I ask Allah's forgiveness? Constantly ask Allah's forgiveness. Ya Allah, forgive me for that which I know, that which I don't know. And you will see your doors opening. What will happen? You will find good produce, mashallah. The economy is improving, for example. Your own little economy is also improving, mashallah. You will find your wealth is, mashallah, becoming so much full of blessings. You find your children, they start listening to you. You, mashallah, you find so much happiness in your home. All that is a result of istighfar. Let us make it a trend on a daily basis, engage in istighfar. Ask Allah's forgiveness more than a hundred times a day. Whilst you're driving, whilst you're walking, whilst you're in your office, whilst you're working, whatever you're doing, continue. Oh Allah, forgive me. Even if you say it in the English language or any other language that you know. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, bless me. Oh Allah, open my doors. And you will notice, inshallah, your doors will definitely start opening. So that is a pearl of peace. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in Surah Al-Infitar of the deception Allah says, and this is a powerful verse, it can bring tears to our eyes. You know, Allah made us. Allah created us. We owe everything to Him. If He wants, He can take me away now. He can take anyone away, here and now. He can take us away immediately or He can prolong our sickness and then take us away. He can do what He wants. Nobody can ask Him. Meaning nobody can hold Him responsible. He is not answerable to any one of us. Nothing. He is totally and absolutely independent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal insan, O oh man, ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. What is it that has deceived you against your own maker who is the most generous? Why are you so deceived? Why don't you want to worship him? What is your problem? What has deceived you against the one who made you? Amazing. Today we are excited if someone says, Brother, I got an Eid gift for you. What is the Eid gift? Just a million rands. Only a million. MashaAllah, only a million. You start thinking, this uncle must be rich. MashaAllah. Hey, subhanAllah. And we're so excited. And then you start greeting him. Why? Because he gave you the million. You're greeting him. Allah gave you your life. We can't even reach Salah. That which is a duty. We can't even dress appropriately. We cannot throw something over our clothing in order to cover, to please our own maker. Allahu Akbar. I think we can do better than this, my brothers and sisters. He gave us the life. He gave me the breath. The eyes I'm looking with right now. And so are you. MashaAllah. Amazing. Imagine, just close your eyes and try and walk from here to your vehicle once we are through with this. And then you realize the gift of sight. Allahu Akbar. And that same Allah, He's telling you, Ma What has deceived you against me? Who's made you? I'm so generous. Allah says, Alladhi khalaqaka fasawwaka fa'adalak. Allahu Akbar. He's the one who made you. He gave you a shape. He is the one who gave this posture to you. He is the one who made you standing. He gave everything. Why are you turning away from Allah? Your own maker. And you know what? You're going to go back to Him anyway. I think we can do much better, my brothers and sisters, myself included, inshallah. We can develop a good link with our maker. Like I said this evening, let's make Allah our best friend by the will of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make Allah your best friend, believe me. He says, if you're trying to come to me an inch, I come to you a whole foot. If you try and come to me a foot, I would come to you even more than that. If you come to me walking, I come to you rushing. Which means, He comes to us faster than we can ever go to Him. So let's try, inshallah, walk towards Allah. And you find your doors opening by the will of Allah. Remember, there is a period of dedication. You need to prove your mettle. You can't just say, right, we started tonight, tomorrow morning. Hey, how come my salary is not increased? Hang on, it's just one morning, man. Relax. It might take a long period of time. Show your dedication, you know. 
For example, people are going through a lot of turbulence and at night, Laylatul Qadr, they're making lots and lots of dua. And following morning they say, but you know what, the heart of my, of my wife is still not settled. Why is it? She still wants out. Relax, you need to prove yourself first. Inshallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may we be from amongst those really whose homes are the happiest of homes. I mean, and remember to have a happy home, you need to work very hard. Don't think you can just have a happy home without working hard. You need to give up your opinion sometimes. You need to sacrifice your time. You need to watch your mouth. You need to say words that sometimes your heart might not readily think of. You need to engage your mind. You need to make people feel good in your home. And you need to go out of your way to do this. Then you have the peace in your home. But if you think, you know what, I married a top woman, mashallah, or I married a really good guy. And you think without an effort, everything's going to be rosy. Believe me, the roses, if they are not looked after in the garden, I don't even want to say what will happen to them. But if you are prepared to water them, smell them every day, they say the more you smell a rose, the more it releases the scent for you. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah. My brothers, that's a powerful message. Really. Work very hard in your garden. Believe me, every day you need to watch, you need to see, you need to smell, you need to put water. And you need to make sure that you have the light coming in at a certain time. And sometimes, you know, all this photosynthesis and everything, you need to think of it, mashallah. They also need to photosynthesize. So if they're bound up in the home 24-7, 365, there's going to be some little issue there. Why? Because your rose is going to wilt. And she'll tell you, there's no sunlight. She's not urgent. She is talking of coming out of the house. You haven't taken me out. Don't think she's now ready to wash the kitchen. No. Allah protect us and Allah grant us the true sunlight, my brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. <laughs> Amen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then makes mention of the laughter. The laughter of those who laugh at others when they are trying to earn the pleasure of Allah. So Allah tells us, don't worry. If people have laughed at you because you are trying to earn my pleasure, perhaps those who dress appropriately are scoffed at sometimes by those who disbelieve or by others. And sometimes maybe people who want to look like Jesus and Muhammad وسلم, and Moses and so on, may peace be upon them all by growing a beard, which is part and parcel of what we are taught. And people might start laughing at them and call them names. Sometimes your own family members may laugh at you. May Allah protect us. Allah says, those who have laughed at the believers due to their belief and due to their obedience of Allah, a day will come when they will be given the opportunity to laugh at the others. So this is why we say two lessons we learn from this. Don't laugh at people trying to earn the pleasure of Allah, no matter what. No matter how weak you are, don't laugh at others. And remember, if people have laughed at you, just smile and thank Allah. Oh Allah, in Surah Al-Mutaffifin, verse number 29 and verse number 34, you've made mention of this laughter. And Allah says at the end, فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَضْحَكُونَ After the first laughter, there will come a day when the believers will be given a chance to laugh at the others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. You know, the English themselves say, he who laughs last, laughs the best. I didn't say that, nor did you. But perhaps it may be correct. May Allah protect us. Where? The one who is victorious finally is the one who is really victorious. May Allah grant us victory in the dunya and the akhirah. May He never make us from those who scoff and laugh at one another. Brothers and sisters, sometimes your children are trying to obey Allah's instruction. Don't be a hindrance. Some sisters, some little girls, for example, as they grow older, they want to dress a bit more modestly. But dad says, no, you're so beautiful. You're so good looking. When you walk with me in the mall, I want people to say, that's his daughter. That's the wrong approach. Believe me, you will, your peace will be snatched away. Because you do not just expose the goodness you have to everyone. No. May Allah protect us. If the same child of yours is on on her own, trying to dress appropriately. Encourage her. She may be stronger than you, my beloved mother. Encourage her. Never tell her, you know what, you're too young. You, can, you don't need to cover up. No. Let them start. Before you know it, they're adults. Before you know it, they're old. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. 
Then we have Surah Al-Sharh, also known as Alam Nashrah. I need to make mention of this because in it is a lot of comfort for myself and yourselves. We have a problem in life. When we have a problem, Allah says, don't worry. With that difficulty, there is ease. You will never know what ease is all about unless you've been through difficulty. Those who have a beautiful life, sometimes they are still worried and depressed because they don't know what it is like to have suffered a little bit. So Allah's blessing makes us suffer slightly so that when there's a little bit of ease, mashallah, you know, a man who's always driven a Rolls Royce will never know what it's like to ride a bicycle to work. Two ways of making them ride. One is the doctor tells you you're about to die. Allahu Akbar. And you need to ride to work. Immediately everything is given up. Why? Because we're worried about dear life. That's why. If you see people, subhanallah, I've seen a man who had a carrot. And he was pretending like he's smoking this carrot and nibbling on it. And I told him, I said, my brother, what made you nibble on this carrot? He says, my doctor told me I can't smoke and a good replacement is a carrot. I said, Allahu Akbar. You're stuffing your mouth with a carrot because of a doctor. But when Allah told you smoking is bad, then you didn't want to listen. Don't make us idiot. Allahu Akbar. May Allah make us from amongst those who eat carrots rather than smoking cigarettes. <laughs> really. So my brothers and sisters, it's a reality. Whenever there is a person who has tasted goodness alone and they don't know what difficulty is about, there comes a time when they do not appreciate what they have. So like I was saying, two ways. One is Allah snatches it away from you. So you now have nothing. So many people have climbed the peak in terms of materialistic items. And then they've dropped down the mountain. They say it's easier to drop from the top than it is from the bottom. Allahu Akbar. When you're right at the top, a small movement and you roll down you're with the avalanche one time. And when you're at the bottom, they can kick you if you drop and you're walking. Same level, mashallah. It's all about altitude. May Allah protect us. Another thing is when you drop from the top, greater likelihood of breaking more bones. When you drop from the bottom, I might have just hurt my head slightly. Just say, ouch, and carry on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us humbleness. So remember, sometimes Allah wants you to go down so that you appreciate the bicycle after you had nothing. Yet, 10 years ago, you had the Rolls Royce. May Allah bless us. So Allah says, and I'm sure we know the verses, verse number 5 and 6. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا Indeed, with every difficulty or with difficulty there is ease. And indeed, with the difficulty there is ease. Some of the scholars of linguistics, they have analyzed the statement and they say, Al-Usr is referring to the same difficulty. And Yusr, because it is common, is referring to a different point of ease. So this verse would mean that with difficulty there is ease and with the same difficulty there is another point of ease as well. Which means with every difficulty there are two points of ease. That's the mercy of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate the suffering that we are all going through in our own little ways. Remember it's a gift of Allah to keep you in check sometimes. To keep you calling out to Him. May Allah open our doors. This evening I'd like to end this entire episode or this whole season and all these sessions we've had by making mention of something very important. The jinn and shaitan does not like us. We started off with the message in session number one. Shaitan does not like us, not at all. He is out to get grip of us, to deceive us, to lead us astray, to chase us away from worshipping our maker alone. So Allah has taught us how to protect ourselves from black magic, from the jinn, from the evil eye, from the devil, from shaitan at large, from so many other points of evil that are brought about by the deception of the devil or by the devil himself. What is this that Allah has taught us? He sent down the last two verses or the last two surahs, the last two chapters of the Quran known as Surah Falaq and Surah An-Nas in order for us to recite, to understand, to repeat it every morning and evening together with what is known as Ayatul Kursi which we read in Surah Al-Baqarah we should be knowing it off by heart and we should be repeating this thrice every morning and every evening just before the sun rises and just as the sun has set we need to read this in order to create a metal armor around us against this type of behavior or activity so then someone tries their luck with you and they find this person is protected with a metal armor. Why? 
They read the Mu'awwidat. Mu'awwidat means those surahs or those verses that have in them the protection of man. So I'm going to read these verses today, not in the Arabic language. We all know them off by heart. So I'll let you read the Arabic on your own. But I will read them for you in the simplest English translation. And in these verses you will notice, we will make mention of those who blow into the knots. They are those who engage in witchcraft. To engage in witchcraft is actually disbelief, is removing yourself from the fold of Islam. So we are not allowed to engage in it. It happens. But there are two things that we are guilty of. One is, some people engage in it, not knowing or knowing that it is actually a removal from the fold of Islam. You can no longer call yourself a Muslim if you engage in witchcraft. And secondly, those who are affected sometimes begin to pinpoint others. That pinpointing, believe me, is also very, very wrong. It is something that we should never get involved in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. I know, in fact, the details of it. We don't have the time and it's not even our subject of how exactly this works. To be honest with you, I can let you know that when people pinpoint others, they normally are getting that information from a jinn. That jinn is so deceptive. Please read Surah Jinn. Please go and read the meaning of Surah Jinn. You will find there Allah has said, those from amongst mankind who seek some form of help or refuge from those of jinn kind, the jinn kind lead them further astray and further into sin. So this would mean we should not be associating with those of jinn kind because they are crooks. No matter what they tell you, when a man comes to your house to steal, he'll ring the bell and he'll tell you, you know what, uh, I'm the meter reader, I've come to read, re read your, meeting, uh, your meter, your water meter. That's what he'll say. He won't tell you I'm a thief. Because obviously say, what, what do you want? But he will deceive you. So the same applies, the jinn, they are so deceiving. But sometimes we, as religious as we are, we think, you know what, I know a jinn. We all communicated sometimes with these jinn, where subhanallah, they lie to you. And when you tell them you're lying, they give you another name. Whose names do they give you? Can I tell you? A very close relative of yours, or a family member, or a friend, or someone you know very well, who is innocent. The reason is, shaitan wins a prize. Every night he goes to the HQ, where he meets his boss, and he gets a prize. The ones who get the biggest prize are those who've created dispute in family. So, he uses a deceptive way to say, you know what, I'm, I've got a lot of hiccups. So, I went to someone who told me, my sister-in-law is doing black magic on me. So, no more. It's been 20 years. Because of my hiccups, I don't talk to my sister-in-law. Come on. I'd rather have hiccups all my life than to be cast in hellfire. May Allah protect us from hiccups as well. So my brothers and sisters, remember that shaitan, he achieved with such a small silly excuse and we believed him. And whoever told us, no matter how religious they were, they don't know shaitan is deceptive. Tell them, please go and try and tell the jinn you are lying. They'll give you another name. And say you are lying, they'll give you a third name. And all these are names of good people because to destroy community and society and to snatch away our peace, we need to break up with our family members and everyone else. Accuse your own auntie and your own uncle of witchcraft when they are completely innocent of it. That is shaitan. Even if the man who gave you the name has a beard from here all the way to central Cape Town. May Allah protect us. Really? I am emotional about this because it's affecting a lot of us. Families are breaking. Based on what? What a man told you? Wallahi, no wahi and revelation came to them. It's a lie. They got the news from a jinn. Try reading these verses. And now we will end inshallah reading the meanings of these verses. Go back home and read the last two surahs of the Quran. Read them religiously every morning and evening. And you should know you will be protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and obviously the lesson is for all of us. This is surah Falaq and after it I'll read surah Nas. Allah says, say, I seek refuge in the Lord of daybreak from the evil of which he created and from the evil of darkness when it settles and from the evil of the blowers in the knots and from the evil of an envier when he envies. That is one surah. How powerful is it? And the next one. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind, the sovereign king of mankind, the worshipped one, the God of mankind from the evil of the retreating whisperers who whisper evil into the bosoms of mankind from amongst the jinn and mankind. May Allah protect us all and may we all be 
really blessed with the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until we meet again sometime we say wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdih subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk